All right, everybody, I think we're good. I think we've lost our technical difficult difficulties, except I'm having difficulty speaking. Good morning, everybody. Link, please. I believe the link is in there, Julian. Check it out. It's, it's all there for you. Let's, uh, let's say good morning. Hello, everybody. How you doing? Let's go into the, let's go into the big screen, say good morning to everybody. So we've got a really good topic for you today. But first, let me do some shameless plugs. You are checking out Smart English. Let's pull it up. There it is. We have 124,850 subscribers and 601 videos. That's true. Uh, please check it out. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell anyone who's up at 2 a.m. or in the late part of the evening, whenever you're awake, please uh, tell them to come check us out. Remember, it's all free. And if you want, you can support our, our habits, our caffeine habits me and also Kareem the Dream for five bucks, whatever you guys decide to donate, we're happy and we're all good. All right, shameless plugs are done. Let's get into the topic of the day. Let's, let's start with a little, let's start with a little uh, background for the topic for today. And let's go with this, because this is what we're really going to be talking about today. Let's look at a few. Oh. Let's see, look at that. All right, so there we go. There's that. What do you think the, if you haven't seen it already, what do you think is the topic for today? We got a little, oh, I ruined it. Damn it. Okay, well, anyways, that's the topic for today. Shout outs. Let's say hello to everybody who's waking up, staying up with us. Uh, Julian, congratulations. You have dethroned Lolly as the, the number one, number one person who always shows up for the stream. And I'm at a close second, congratulations. This has turned into a new competition. Lolly, a very honorable number three. You can't stay at the top forever. Uh, Waffa Waffa, what's up, Waffa Waffa? Hello, hello. Uh, oh my goodness, this is a name that I will destroy with my pronunciation. I'm gonna call you K, all right? Because I, I can pronounce that name. What's up, K? Uh, Tiolina, hello Tiolina from Russia. We got a Russian in the house. There we go. Uh, Smart English is in the house. I'm here. Uh, who else we got in here? Areej, good morning, Areej. How you doing? Areej is a regular here as well. Who else we got in the house? Edgar, what's up, my man? He's in the house. Sweet Sarah, what's up from the Netherlands? There we go. Yeah, always tell us where you're from. Are you? We're streaming out of not so sunny Vancouver. Uh, where are you guys from? If you're new, tell us where you're from. We always love to know. Sarah's from the Netherlands. Miriam, good question. Where is the good music? Well, it was there. I think there was some good music. Had a little technical difficulties, but we're good now. All right, and I got everybody here. Who else is here? Did I miss anybody? No, 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 no. Miriam, yeah, music. There we go. Hey, good. Vlad's in the house. What's up, Vlad? How you doing, buddy? Uh, Zia's in the house. What's kicking <laughs> chicken I've never actually heard that Vlad I like it or sorry Vlad Ziad I like that one I'm gonna use it what's kicking little chicken I like it uh, sup Marjorie hello hello Marjorie how you doing Jose's in the house what's up buddy how you doing all right the crew is here let's get it done let's do this so here's what here's what we're gonna do today here's the document let me share it one more time I do have a baby face sometimes I do sometimes I shave and it's usually, the reason I shave is out of, it was just, it's too much, you know, it's getting too crazy. I usually cut the hair and I do the, the shave at the same time, so it's like brand new face. But, uh, you know, sometimes you gotta shave, you know, it's just getting, how have I been? I've been amazing, buddy. I've been amazing, Julian. How have you been? Uh, having a good week. I don't know. It's just one of those weeks. Feeling good, feeling strong. Sarah likes the music. Well, you can always check out the music that I stream because it's got to be non-copyrighted. Uh, we have a stream and you can always check it out. It's basically you search non-copyrighted music and there's a link there and I just kind of choose the tunes from there. So there you go. You look like a fresh man, yeah? Fresh meaning cool, right? Okay, I hope so. Boss, yes, thank you. That's the correct. Don't call me Kent, call me boss. That's the way I like it. By the way, nice shirt. Thank you, buddy. Uh, Edgar loves my shirts and one of these days I'm gonna send him a shirt because he's, he's, been, he's been very good. Maybe one of the shirts that I don't use. I know you had your eye on that other one, that gray and black one. Maybe I'll send that one to you. You have to send me your, after, after class, buddy, send me your address and maybe Santa will deliver something for you. Don't know if it'll fit, but you know. Uh, all right, Julian's having a tough day. He got dumped. That's rough times, Julian. But you know, we have, um, 
I know in Brazil there's a certain expression that I learned yesterday that I'm very excited to use in English. One more soldier. Eh? Right? One more soldier back on the team, buddy. Uh, I like that one a lot. That was cool. A Brazilian taught me that one. So usually you say one less soldier, like when you're getting married, like you lose someone from the team, but one more soldier, you're back on the team. And the other one is there's lots of fish, Julian, so don't worry about that. Mm, lots of time to get back on that. Yeah, exactly. So don't worry, man. It happens. You're a young dude. Don't worry, all right? You got a lot of time before you start thinking seriously, likely, unless you find the right one. Uh, so hang in there. You'll be all right. Gertrudis, what's up? She's in the house. Love it. The crew is here. We're just missing a few more. They'll probably come in. Plenty of fish. Exactly. Miriam, you're right. Well, Wafa, it's not about relationships. I'll tell you that. It's definitely not. But uh, Johnny, what's up, Johnny? Not, not, not much, man. I'm doing good. All right. Marcos, what's up, buddy? All right. So let's, let's jump into this. So here's the topic. The topic of today is actually the supernatural. And here it is. I don't think that helps you. That, that is what we're after. Like that face right there. And what is the supernatural? Maybe we need to define it before we get into this topic. Look at that. What's going on here? A little bit of that. Ooh, a little bit of that. Oh, what's going on? Who's this man? Who's this freaky looking dude? Freaky, that's a good word. Uh, okay, so here we go. So let's go here. Let's go to Google and let's look at supernatural definition. Let's see what it is before we talk about it. Supernatural means the manifestation or events attributed to some force. This is the important part. A force attributed to some force beyond scientific understanding. So science cannot explain the supernatural or the laws of nature. If something happens that break the laws of nature, we would also. So basically anything you which is not explained by science, we would call it the supernatural. So the supernatural is a good word we can use for anything which is unexplainable. Uh, you can also use paranormal, but paranormal is more specific. The paranormal is more about uh, telekinesis, like moving things with your mind, clairvoyance, predicting the future, and we're going to teach you those words today as well. So this is the topic. So let's get warmed up with a question of the day. I know you love a good question of the day, so let's throw it in there and let's get chatting. And there it is. Uh, question of the day is, have you ever witnessed an event that you couldn't explain? I'm going to make that bigger. Let's go 14. No, that didn't work. Okay, so have you ever witnessed an event that you couldn't explain? All right, so tell me what it was. Let's make that a little bigger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we go. 18's good. Boom. All right, so there it is. Have you ever witnessed an event that you couldn't explain? Maybe something, for example, a ghost or some kind of activity that you just couldn't explain. All right, and we're going to get into some vocabulary which we use to talk about that. Uh, poltergeist, there's a word that I forgot to add. I'm going to add it to your list. So if you want, you can check out the list that I've given you in the document. Uh, and there's a lot of cool words here and a lot of interesting topics. Poltergeist is like a ghost, like a haunting ghost. All right, so tell me. Some people, I've got some cool stories. I heard a cool story today. One of the teachers at my school. Do you guys know what a Ouija board is? Let me, let me, let me prep this, this uh, story. A Ouija board. Don't, don't, Judith is not at home. I hope I can get the that one. I hope so too, Judith. You're, you're kind of here. I don't know if you can see the video, but maybe you can join the discussion. That could be all right. Uh, so here's a Ouija board. So here's a picture of what I'm, what I'm getting to. That's a Ouija board. Do you know what that is? Have you seen that before? Where you like move things up there and down there, right? It moves it around and you hold it together so me and a friend will like control this piece and the piece will move to letters and create uh, an answer for you. So you ask the board a question like, am I going to get married? And the board will go, yes or no, or spell something, or use some numbers, or say goodbye, just like leave you, like I'm tired, I'm going home. Do you know what I'm talking about? <clears throat> so let's see here. All right, so let's see who's got any, any supernatural events going on. 
Julian's got one here. He says he went to an abandoned house. And if you don't know, an abandoned house is a house where there are no people inside. Nobody lives there anymore. Let's, let's look at an abandoned house. This is an abandoned house, right? Like nobody lives there anymore like that. That's definitely an abandoned house. Pretty creepy looking, kind of cool looking though. So he says he went to an abandoned house and, so and had something thrown at him. Interesting. All right, that's an interesting story. Okay, all right, so there's one. Ahmed says, yes, by dream, in a dream. Yes, in a dream, but in reality, nothing ever happened yet, or it never happened yet. You could use both of those. Uh, what else we got? Okay. Edgar says, I used to play with a Ouija, but it never moved past, moved itself. Okay, so there you go. Doesn't always work, I guess. Sarah, what do you mean? Something scary or something beautiful? I guess it could be anything. Remember, the definition of supernatural is something that science cannot explain. So it could be, it could be basically, it could be a TV show. Supernatural is a TV show as well. The X-Files, you guys know the X-Files? That was a very, very famous TV show. So if you want, you can always check out Supernatural, which is a TV show about supernatural events. I think that's more of a teenager TV show, so if you are a little bit younger, that's a good show for you. This one here is, is popular, I heard. And then the other one, which used to be really famous, I'm old, that's cool, uh, is X-Files. That one used to be really popular back, back in the day. I don't know, I don't want to tell you how long back in the day, but quite a while. So anyways, but that one's pretty awesome. And they brought that TV show back, so now they're showing new episodes. Okay? But I want personal experience. Yeah, I know we're going to talk about Stonehenge and all that stuff, but I want, to, I want to hear your stories if you had anything like this. Anyone else? So, okay, there we go. Uh, Vladimir, I can't explain where the Ukrainian government spends its money. It's a supernatural phenomenon. There we go. Awesome. Have no idea. Uh, okay, all right, here we go. Nobody's got, nobody seems to have one for that, so that's fine. That's cool. We're going to get into some discussion questions here. And I'll hit you with them like this. Number one. So let's start with that one here. Here's another one for you. Do you believe in life on other planets? Right? So do you think aliens exist? Do you think there is some kind of... Let's take a look. Let's take a look at life on other planets. Let's see what they look. Is there an idea? What do I... Well, we might have this guy. That guy might <laughs> exist. He might just be hanging out. Maybe he's right next to me right now. He's like, oh, dude, what's up? We're learning, checking out English together. I'm sure his is better than mine. All right, so we got that. Okay, so this isn't giving us too much, but you, you got the idea. Do you think there's life on other planets? Not Maybe not that guy. That guy's a little too in your face. But, and again, what would it look like? Ooh, interesting, right? Because it, it's not going to, probably won't look like people. It's probably going to look something different because everything is different. Maybe you don't know. Well, yeah, I think nobody, nobody really knows. E.T. is on the moon. Thanks, Jill, and I was curious where he went to. Uh, okay, so there you go. Um, Ahmed says, do you think that everything could be explained by science? Great question, Ahmed. I don't know. I really, I'm not the guy to ask. Uh, I'm the guy who creates the fun activities, but I don't have too many of the answers. Could ex the science explain everything? I don't know. I guess we'll find out more and more as we progress. And of course, there's always something to, to learn. I think the good thing about science is that it's, uh, science is never happy. Science is always trying to break itself, you know, trying to go further and answer questions. So I like that mo I like that thing about science. It always changes. It's always like trying to improve, trying to answer questions. So yeah, so there we go. Judith has got one. And I, I know I've talked about this TV show before, but if you haven't seen it, check it out. Uh, Cosmos TV show. This show is the bomb. New word, the bomb. Uh, it's a super cool TV show. It takes you through the evolution of humans and talks about space, uh, famous people in the world. It's a really awesome look at uh, the galaxies, our galaxy, other galaxies, and our history. Really, really awesome TV show. Highly recommend you check that out. But the question here, do you believe in life on other planets? I personally do, because once you watch Cosmos, you'll realize how many millions and millions and billion, billions and billions and billions of planets exist that we know about, and there's probably more that we don't know about. So 
That's interesting. So I would say yes. I would say, you know, there's so many planets out there. How the chance must be really great that there's some kind of life. What does life look like? Is it like like this? Is it invisible? I don't know. I have no idea. But I feel like I feel like there's got to be something. Why why just us, right? Let's go to the chat for some opinions here. Uh, Ziad says people who went to Mars and the Moon would have seen them. That's definitely a possibility. Maybe they saw something, right? And again, they probably saw something. They probably saw a UFO. And here's that word here. So everybody knows that word, a UFO, an unidentified flying object. So if something is moving, flying, right, flying through space, we would say like this one. You don't know what it is. You can see something's happening. So we call those UFOs because we don't know what they are. So maybe it was a UFO, maybe it's you know, maybe it's something else. Yeah, it's definitely possible those guys. And you know, there's videos on YouTube. Some of them are interesting, some of them seem like conspiracy theories. There's a new word for you. A conspiracy theory. Let me add that to the list. That's an awesome word. A conspiracy theory is an idea that people have. Like, you know, it's a it's an idea that people like it's a theory. You guys know that word? Um, how to explain it? An idea, an explanation, uh, an, uh, an explanation for something. To which the answer is not known. To which the answer is not known. Like JFK, right? Like who shot JFK? That was like a big conspiracy theory. They, they thought maybe it was the government. Maybe the US government did it. Maybe it was someone else. Like there was a lot of questions about that. Interesting one. Uh, Bella, maybe, maybe there is life on another planet where monkeys rule. Yeah, it could be a planet full of monkeys. Let's look at that. What was that movie called? Uh, planet of the Apes, of course. This is definitely possible. I feel like monkeys could be really smart somewhere else. Like there's a whole planet of monkeys. That could definitely happen. It could go be the leader there, maybe. Uh, all right, very nice. Yeah, monkeys, why not? <laughs> Julian, aliens are a fantasy type of being that hasn't been proven true by science. That's also true. Gertrudis, in many cultures, people believe in amulets. There's a good new word. What's an amulet? To protect them from bad luck. Let me do that. That's a good word. Amulet. So let's take a picture. Let's look at a picture. This is an amulet, right? It's something you wear to protect you. All right, that's an amulet right there. That could be an amulet. This could be an amulet. So there's a good new word that we can use. An amulet. Piece of jewelry. Thought to have special powers. Boom, there we go. Okay, next one. Uh, let me do a few more here. Uh, what have we got here? Yes, I totally believe. Uh, Johnny says, yes, I totally believe in supernatural events. Or, sorry, aliens. We're talking about aliens. I totally believe in aliens. And I still wait for the day when they come and visit me. Maybe soon, buddy. Maybe soon. And we always say, I believe in something. Do you believe in ghosts? Do you believe in aliens, right? Uh, Ahmed, could the science reveal what had happened before the Big Bang? The Big Bang, because there was one specific Big Bang for us that we talk about. I don't know. That's a good question. Um, who knows? They kind of, they say that they dated the Big Bang, like they know approximately when the Big Bang happened, which is really interesting. I don't know how they do this. They measure like the expansion of galaxies and stuff, and this is how they come up with maybe approximate numbers of when it happened. It's a way of measuring. Uh, all right, so there we go. Uh, <laughs> Vlad says, I do believe in life, L-I-F-E, on other planets, and only tremendous distance divides, D-I-V-I-D-E-S, divides us from them. That's interesting, yeah, I agree. A flying saucer is a UFO, right, you're right, okay. Uh, Julian, what's the difference between Canadian English and American English? Canadian English mostly sounds the same if you go from Western Canada to Eastern Canada, but if you go from Western to Eastern USA or especially North to South, it sounds so different. Yeah, so that's the short answer. I can't give you a long answer, it would take a long time. 
Uh, Marcos, what's up, Marcos? How you doing? Probably there are a lot of different kinds, kinds of forms. We have to use kinds of forms of life with an E in the universe. Lolly didn't shoot JFK. <sighs> Lolly, you were like number one on my list, so I'm I'm very happy to hear that it wasn't you. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's what they say. Sarah, how can we believe that? We have no evidence of that. Maybe you can imagine that, but nothing concrete. I agree. I agree. It's all speculation. Why do we have aliens? No, no proof, right? This is the problem, and this is what people are looking for. Okay, next one. One more, and then we're going to skip to the next question. Gertrude says, many things are a mystery until science, no the, just all science, scientific or science discoveries, I-E-S, or many things are a mystery until until science discovers them or there is a logical explanation. There we go. Canadians are more polite than Americans? Hmm, I would say generally, maybe yes, but I think it also depends. I think it depends on people, uh, of course, but yeah, we're pretty polite, I'll be honest. We're pretty good. Uh, all right, let's do, hmm, which one? I got so many interesting, all these interesting questions need to be talked about. Let's do this one. Harry Potter fans, here we go. What's up, JB? Does magic exist? That's the question. Does it exist? Do you believe in magic? There's a song about that. What do you think? Magic. Do you have any stories you can share with us about that? That's, a, that's an interesting one. Harry Potter fans, what do you think? Abracadabra, boom, cast a spell. Yes, I don't think so, no. If you guys want to check out something fun, no, I don't think it. I personally don't think it's magic because they're all they're all tricks, right? But this guy is pretty cool. His name is Chris Angel. Now, I, unfortunately, I can't show you anything from this guy's website. Oh, sorry, it's Chris Double. Ah! No, no, no. I'm gonna pause it. Copyright. But anyways, if you want to check it out, this is pretty interesting. This guy's pretty fun. His videos are crazy, right? Uh, that's one. His name is Chris Angel, C-R-I-S-S, -S, and he does magic. Pretty awesome. And another one you can check out is another one called David Blaine, and he did some pretty cool stuff. He would do this, like, street magic stuff. That guy's pretty awesome, too. He does some pretty crazy stuff. I can't show it to you on YouTube, but check it out after. Really cool stuff. All right, so what do you guys think about this magic question? Julian's on the 50-50. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, David Blaine, yeah, exactly. Magic is, exists only for only for those, those people who believe in it. Okay, could be. Miriam says the magicians are trained people and they're very, very good. I agree, they're probably super, super good at deceiving people, tricking people. Uh, let's add that. When you trick someone, you fool someone. So I have a lot of words on this list. I'm gonna go through them after. Normally I do this, I let you guys do this list for me, but I, today I created the whole list myself. So trick or fool someone, right? So maybe you go to you know, someone and they do magic, and what do they do? They trick you, they trick your eyes, they trick, your, you, know, they trick you into thinking something. And a similar word to say would be deceive. Trick, fool, or deceive. All right, uh, gratuitous. Many people have suffered strong, strong, Strong what? Strong sessions of exorcism? Have ex many people have experienced strong something of exorcism when they had, ah, okay, when they had a large, when they have a large brain tumor. Okay, so there's some kind of hallucination. So let's add that to the word. Hallucination is when you, or hallucinate. Uh, I'll just use it as a verb. Hallucinate is when you see things, you see things, but they don't, they're not there. You're just, your eyes are creating, your brain is creating something, but it's not there. Like a mirage. See things which aren't really there. Okay, hallucinate. So some people hallucinate. That could be what happens with the tumor, maybe pressing on the brain or something. A bunch of tricks. Everybody can do magic. Yeah, maybe they can could probably take the time to learn it. All right, next question. Mm -hmm. All right, let's skip ahead. This one's kind of fun because we're already running into a little, we're halfway through. So here we go, one more question, and then I'm going to burn through this vocabulary. 
So here we go. This question is kind of fun. I like this one. I like fun questions. And this one is, if you were a wizard, if you were Gandalf, let's, let's take a picture of, let's show Gandalf. Let's maybe a little gif, shall we? Gandalf gif. This should be good. There he is. There's a man right there. It's not really moving there. Let's see if we got another one. I like the one with shades. That's kind of fun. Look at that. <laughs> awesome. Look at that. If you were this guy, bobbing up and down with your shades, looking cool, and you could cast cast a spell. We cast spells. Uh, or you put a spell on someone. So if you were that dude, what kind of spell would you cast? Would you like go invisible? Or would you go like something? Or would you, you know what I mean? What would you do? What would be your first spell? If you were a wizard, what would be the first spell that you cast? Hey, Amar. What's up, buddy? Uh, Julian, erase bad memories. Uh, that's what I would do. So there you go. Erase bad memories. Erase all of your bad memories. Uh, Ahmed says, what's the difference between hermetic and charm and magic? Dude, that's, that's a heavy question. I'm going to have to consult with my friend Google. Uh, charm. I think a charm is usually good. It's like positive. Charm. Magic. What does it mean? Charm definition. Let's see what charm says here. So we want charm as a verb. Here we go. Oh, okay. No, it's not positive or negative. It's just normal. It's just control. You charm someone. It's like you cast a spell on them. So you control or achieve this because of magic. So you can charm someone. So let's add that to your list. And you can also have a charm. You can have a lucky charm. Not the, not the cereal, but you know the other ones. Charm, put a spell on someone. Okay, and then hermetic. Don't even know that word, buddy. Hermetic. Well, there's no verb. So it's an adjective only. So a hermetic seal means it could mean like secret, hermetic, or so it's the number two meaning. It's not the number one. It says insulated or protected. It's kind of like protected. You know, obscure. It's a big one, buddy. I'm not sure. Hermetic. It's like it seems to be like protected secret, cryptic, you know, like that. And the last one was magic, magic is magic. Uh, all right. Vladimir says, I would fill the earth with love. That's a great idea, Vlad. I like that. I like that answer. That's a good one. Uh, I, I, have, I have an answer for this one as well because a student gave it to me once and I've always remembered it. It was a really awesome answer. I wish I could remember who gave that answer though. Uh, my first spell would be to buy the Smart English Center. All right. That's an interesting one, Ziad. Maybe just once you make some money, you buy it. You know, take us all with you. We'll go somewhere. We'll go do some traveling, some teaching. I think it'll be a good idea. Can I post the link for the class? Yes, I can, of course. So here we go. Here is the link. This is everything we're working on. All right, so I think we, we've done that. So if no one else has an answer, I want to burn through this a little bit faster because I want to get to all the vocab, which, uh, which we haven't gotten to yet. So let's do this. So the next one uh, was number five. Have you ever been inside a haunted house? And we did this one. I can't off. Look at you. A haunted house. So this is a haunted house. No, I want, I want a real haunted house. Not the movie. There we go. This is a haunted house, a scary house. And another way, how would you, how would you describe this house? You would say it's haunted, right? There, there are ghosts inside. That's what haunted means. And you would also s say something like, uh, what was creepy about it? What is creepy? Creepy is like kind of scary. And there's some other ways to say creepy, which I'll, I'll go into later. Number six is a good question. What is a bad omen in your culture? So for example, uh, we use this word in English, an omen. 
for example, like this, a black cat. You know, you know this one? A black cat is a bad omen. It's a bad sign. It's a bad, you know what I mean? Not this, no, that one, look at him, he's so cute. That's not a bad omen. Uh, a black cat crossing your path. This one is supposed to be bad. I don't, I don't, look at that cat, he's cute. But anyways, this is supposed to be bad luck. So this is a bad omen or a bad sign. You can kind of use both words. All right, uh, the Ouija board question we already did. Have you ever had a Ouija board? We talked about that. And did you ever have any superstitions when you played sports? So for example, uh, hockey players in Canada. Uh, let's, or let's check it out, superstitions in sports. Let's see what happens. It's hard to, oh yeah, this one, this is a good one. So in Detroit, uh, when the hockey team goes to the finals, before every game, they throw a, you know, it's not very nice, but they throw a dead octopus onto the ice because it's tradition and it's supposed to be good luck for the team. So there we go. Uh, all right, let me go back here and let's see what people say here. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Okay, superstitions. Yes, I have a black cat. It's on my table. Well, that's good luck, buddy. That's, that cat's probably super cute. So I don't think it's bad luck. Uh, Julian says, look up. Mo Sargi's Om Haunted House. Okay, so we got a really haunted house here. Uh, Ahmed, we have some months in our country that has a bad omen in it, or on them, because we're talking about months, on, on those months. Hello, Alex, how you doing? Come on in. Uh, Ziad said there's a haunted house in our city. Once anybody tries entering the house, a fire is set in the doorway. Really? That would be creepy. Uh, in my hometown, we had a hotel, which was everybody said, everybody who worked there said it was haunted. So let's see, haunted, Fairmont, where is it? Fairmont Hotel, Winnipeg. What, does everybody have a haunted hotel? There was like every, every building was coming out there. So this is it here. It's an old building in my home, my home city, not my hometown. And it's supposed to be haunted. Everybody, everybody who works there says, you hear sounds, you hear noises, like all the staff apparently say, yeah, we hear stuff at night. We hear things moving and stuff like that. So there it is. If you're ever in Canada and for some reason go to my hometown, you could check out that haunted place. And I guess you could stay there if you wanted to. That could be interesting. Uh, Amir says, do you believe in superstitions? Superstitions? Not really. Like. Um, Taiwanese people are pretty superstitious. They think, oh yeah, there's ghosts everywhere. Uh, Korean people do that as well. Um, you know, uh, I don't know. No, I don't. I personally don't. All right, I'm going to search it, Julian. Here we go. Mo Sargi. I don't know how to say that name. Haunted house. What is this? Oh, okay. So there we go. So apparently, what does it say here? I returned to Tom's haunted house and this is what happened. A girl in the window. Oh, scary. What else? What else we got here? She's in the window. Tom. So apparently there's somebody always in the window at this place. The bed is moving. I almost lost my life here. Okay, I don't know, I don't know what this place is. Is it a real thing? A lot of videos here. Why are there so many videos? I guess a lot of people in there. Okay, so there we go. Somebody, some kind of famous haunted house. Looks scary. Anyways, all right. Uh, where is the haunted house in Vancouver? Good question. Let's let's take a quick look. I don't know if there is one. Maybe there is. Probably there is something somewhere. Haunted house, Vancouver. It's probably the real hallow. It's probably a Halloween house. Uh, let's try a real haunted house and let's see what pops up. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Is there anything? No, no. Uh, feeling no. So we have Halloween. So this is something we do at Halloween. Uh, it's the PE Haunted House. Yeah. This place is awesome. So in Vancouver on Halloween, you can go to these places. And if you go to the PE, 
they have like seven different haunted houses and they're all really awesome and sometimes there's people inside jumping out to scare you super awesome so there you go if you ever come to Vancouver for Halloween it's fun English schools always do something cool so last year for Halloween I was fat Batman that's right fat Batman and it was the best costume could have been the best one of the best costumes I've ever done so there you go all right so here we go I'm gonna go I'm gonna hit you with a big list uh, you guys ask any questions you have so let me go through this list because there's a lot of vocab here but we don't have time to do it all one by one so you witness let's start with this one here let me make that a little bit bigger let's make that bigger size all right here we go so let's talk about these words here all right, so the first word is uh, witness. Have you ever witnessed a supernatural event? So if we say witness, like seen a UFO, have you ever witnessed a UFO? That would be a good word we use to say, not everyone has seen this, but witness something or something like that. Uh, what do you believe in? Do you believe in ghosts? Do you believe in superstitions? Do you believe in all this stuff? read your fortune has some you know with the ones where they like look at your hand and they like tell you something about that or they just look at your face and they tell you stuff about yourself that's fortune a fortune teller so that's another so some people might read your fortune ufo of course i think everybody probably knows this right we say a ufo is an unidentified flying object we can see something flying in the sky but we don't know what it is so it's unidentified uh, another good collocation is unexplained, unexplained phenomena. Uh, that is unexplained phenomena, or this is unexplained phenomena. We don't know why this happens. Okay, next one. Spooky, creepy, eerie. A little bit scary. Ghosts are a spooky ghost, a creepy house, an eerie sound. So a lot of these adjectives are used to describe something who is a little, something which is a little bit scary. Uh, going on, so here, keeping going, a psychic. A psychic, a clairvoyant, or a fortune teller are people who can tell you about the future. So far, so good. Hello, Hisham, what's up? Uh, mysterious, you know this word, kind of like we don't know, it's kind of creepy, like the pyramids might be mysterious, or houses might be mysterious. Uh, one of my coworkers mentioned this one, extra sensory perception. So basically, you might be able to read someone's mind or you might be able to just feel something and that would be extrasensory, like not normal senses, like extra senses. Marcos doesn't believe in anything that's supernatural. That's cool, man. Um, that's fine. All opinions are welcome. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm a bit of a skeptic too. Um, some things are definitely, you know, we don't understand, but that's a good word, a skeptic. So Marcos, you would be a skeptic. Uh, skeptical is the word so a skeptic is is a person who doesn't believe in supernatural things uh, okay doesn't believe in some ideas some things all right good word going on f a little further so maybe what we'll do because we're running out of time after I, after I give you this, these words, maybe you guys can give me some sentences uh, that you might use to describe this stuff. Uh, the next one is a mind reader. So someone who, someone who literally reads your mind, right? A mind reader. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Black magic, right? You know magic, right? And we have black magic as well. And I think voodoo is similar. Voodoo is a kind of black magic. As we mentioned before, you cast magic spells. W what are different ways to say ghosts? You can say ghosts, you can say spirits, you can say specters, and you can say poltergeist. There we go. Haunted, we talked about that. Uh, there are ghosts inside a haunted house, a haunted hotel. Ancestors. People from your past, your grandparents, your grand great grandparents, your great 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 grandparents. Some people th say that they can speak to your ancestors, so that's why that word. Good luck, bad luck, yeah. 
exorcism. This is an interesting word because it's funny. We've had some students at the school, and they say an exorcism is when imagine imagine here's me, but there's a ghost inside me, and somebody needs to take that ghost out of me. So that's an exorcism, uh, and it's funny because some students have said like, oh, I've seen an exorcism. It's like what? Okay, but anyways, you never know. Maybe it's the tumor thing, right? It's, it could be stuff that we don't know. How are we doing so far here? I'm, I'm not hitting you with a lot of words. Uh, spooks. Uh, spooks, 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 spooks. Good question. I think I'll have to Google that one. What is a spook? A ghost? Yeah, okay. So Or a spy. There we go. So it's two meanings. It could be a ghost or a spy. Good word. So let's add that one. A spook. I never used that for a ghost, but okay, there we go. A spook. All right, next, keep rolling here. Uh, a hex. Spooky, yes. <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. So good luck sleeping tonight. I, don't worry, it's all, it's all, I don't think any of it exists. Just trust me on that, and you'll sleep like a baby. All right, good night. So a hex and a curse. If I hex, it's not a spell. But if I like say, what if I, it's kind of like a spell, like you, I guess it could be a spell. You know, it is a spell. It is a spell. It's a bad spell when you curse someone. Curses swear, and a hex is the same thing, I believe. So let's Google that. A curse. No definitions? Come on. Really? Let's ask regular internet. No Google. What is a curse? Here we go. A curse, also called an imprecation, maldiction, excretion. Dude, there's a lot of words here. Uh, is any express wish that the same form of adversity or misfortune will befall another person? So basically, it's you are hoping. You say it aloud. You, you give a curse that you want something bad to happen to somebody. That would be a curse or a hex. So a curse on your house, a hex on your house. Uh, okay, how we doing over here? Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, it might be a tumor. That could be it, right? That craziness. Divination, divine, div divination, yeah. Okay, I think I need a good explanation for divination. I know, it, I know the meaning, but I just need an explanation. Divination, the practice of seeking knowledge of the future or the unknown by supernet. Oh, okay. So it's the same as fortune telling. Okay, let me add that to the list. So where's my fortune telling? Divination, fortune telling. Tell fortunes. Okay, cool. There we go. Let's keep going. Almost there. Uh, jinx. And you can also say, uh, so a lot of these words you can change. So jinx. So if somebody says, like, uh, your, your team, your team is going to lose, and you say, no, 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 jinx, 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 and jinx stops the hex. Does that make sense? Uh, like, or let's say my friend is, let's say me and my friend are playing a game, and my friend is is he's going to do, if he, if he f does this, he's going to win the game. And I say, jinx, 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 jinx. It's like, curse, curse you. It's like, stop, stop what's happening. Jinx, jinx, jinx. Interesting word. I like it. It's fun to say. Easy to say. A premonition. A premonition is when you have a thought about the future. Like, oh my God, I'm going to die. Or, oh my God, I'm going to win the lottery. You have, it's like a dream you have about something that's going to happen in the future. An omen, a sign, we talked about this, the black cats. The black cats were a bad omen or a bad sign. You can say both of those. A good sign, you could have a good omen or a good sign. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, Mariam says, I have many Reiki experiences. Interesting, which is really super, which are experiences, are, which are really supernatural experiences around the energy of the universe. I have a friend who has a story about Reiki. It was really interesting because he had a nose problem, breathing, and apparently she did something to him, 
and it got better. That's I don't know what that is, but it's interesting. I'd like to learn a little bit more about that. But it seems like it doesn't seem well documented. Like people are into Reiki, but I don't know. I don't know how you get into it or how you learn about it. It's interesting though. All right, almost done. Telekinesis, psychokinesis. I can move, move things with my mind. That's that. Telepathy. I can read your mind. Superstitions, we talked about. Beliefs people have about good luck and bad luck. Conspiracy theory, we talked about. JFK, conspiracy theory. An amulet, we talked about. And we talked about all these other ones before. All right, so there we go. Uh, Hisham mean, says, does omen mean presage? Great question. I don't know that word, presage. So let me check it out. Mm -hmm. Yes, apparently it does. Yep, it does. A sign or a warning that something typically bad will happen. So yes, you could also. It's not common to use this word in English because obviously I didn't know it. Uh, you could also say a warning, uh, a forewarning, all those words. All those words are good. All right, there we go. Boom. We've done it. I've smashed you with a bunch of words. So what you guys can do, maybe maybe with the little bit, the little bit of time we have, can you guys please take take these words and and make some sentences? Uh, so take these words here from the vocab list and make your own and give your opinions. Okay. Uh, so. Like, for example, an exorcism or, I don't know, a jinx. Like, I jinxed my friend or something like that. Do you always jinx your friends? Like, maybe your friend's trying to work, or you're trying to do or trying to win something, and you're like, jinx, jinx, jinx. Or black magic, you know, like, give a, give a sentence about yourself. Give an opinion. You know, what do you think about unexplained phenomena? What do you think is creepy? What do you think is spooky? Have you ever visited a psychic or a clairvoyant or a fortune teller? Do you practice divination, right? So all these things. So go ahead, give us a sentence about you, and I want you to use these words that we talked about today: uh, hex, curse, premonition. Because this is a lot of this is a lot of interesting topics, and you maybe you don't believe in them, and that's fine. That's cool. Nobody nobody says you got to, but it's a fun topic to talk about. I definitely agree with that. I do a, I could probably do a week on this topic, and it'd be pretty, pretty good. All right, so what do you think? Can you give me some sentences to explain your opinion or maybe something that happened to you using these words? Hallucinate. Have you ever hallucinated? Why were you hallucinating? Charm. Would, who would you, which celebrity would you like to charm so that celebrity falls in love with you? Boom. Great question. Uh, skeptic. Are you a skeptic? You don't believe in these things. You're like, nah, I don't believe in superstitions. I'm skeptical. So we can do that as well. I need more lists. I need more room for words here. Skeptical, a skeptic. Uh, hallucination, hallucinate. You are hallucinating, right? Uh, Julian's got one here. Oh, sorry. What, what else we got here? Good. Amr's got one. He says a, ha a haunted ed, a haunted house. Does look creepy. I totally agree. Uh, Brian. Uh, I had a premonition this morning. What was your premonition, buddy? Tell me. Give us a little more info. Uh, Julia, my best friend, got an exorcism. Okay, interesting. In a haunted house. Well, that's that's a rough day, man. Uh, don't. I would get my exorcism at like a spa. You know what I mean? Like go relax in a spa. I gotta search that. Uh, Gertrude has got me thinking. Exorcism and tumors. Ca reasons, causes of exorcism. No. Well, how, how do I even search this? Exorcism reasons. What's really going on? Oh, I like that one. That's kind of interesting. What's really going on? Mm -hmm. No one can say no, 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 no. What causes the appearance of possession? Historically, exorcisms have been used to treat a wide variety. Okay, let's make this bigger so you can all see it together. Where did it go? Historic historically, I can't speak. 
Exorcisms have been used to treat a wide variety of symptoms that are now associated with mental issues. People with schizophrenia, we would say like multiple, you know, like multiple personalities, personality issues, delusions, hallucinations, are s or severe depression, very sad, might all have been considered candidates for exorcisms in the past. Each of these issues can, in some cases, cause unusual or scary behavior. So it looks like the person has changed, so you would have an exorcism because that person could be depressed, experiencing hallucinations, delusions, or something like that. Interesting. Uh, what else do we got here? Okay, anyways, so there we go. Some, some reasons why you might have had exorcisms in the past. All right, what else we got here? Uh, Miriam's got one. It doesn't exist. Good luck and bad. Good luck and bad luck don't exist. Two don't exist. But prepare for the opportunity and hard work. Yeah, I agree. So prepare, prepare yourself for opportunities by working hard. Something like that. Uh, okay. Um, next one, Julian. I was I was one who brought up. Ex yes, you were. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Julian. Much credit. Credit to you, buddy. Credit to you for bringing up that. And that was. It's an interesting topic, right? Because maybe it's not spirits at all. Maybe it's you know what I mean. Hallucinations, depression. Interesting. Um, but you know, old way, new way. Hopefully, we're learning more. Uh, okay. Next, Ahmed psychics and fortune tellers are scammers and deceivers. That's definitely a possibility, right? Uh, so let's put that. A scam is another word, uh, which is like a trick, mm, and usually takes your money. Scam, uh, a trick designed to an elaborate a scam. I don't know how to explain scam. When somebody fools you, they trick you. Uh, okay, well, what else we got here? One more. Uh, Brian, old people in my country tend to carry with them an amulet. Oh, interesting. All right, a little old, older, I don't know, you know, it's a comfort thing. They think it's got special abilities, and maybe it's got a placebo effect. You know what I mean? Do you know that word, placebo? So if I say, for example, if I say, you know what? If I use this amazing pen, I will have good luck. And I think, I will have good luck. I will have good luck. And then I get good luck. I say, oh my god, it's because of the pen. Amazing. So it has a placebo effect. You might use that to talk about superstitions, right? So, or you might just say, it's, I'm superstitious. Like, I have to use this pen when I'm doing tests because it will bring me good luck. And maybe it, because you think it's going to bring you good luck, maybe it kind of does. It, you know, it kind of helps you. So uh, an effect. Oh, I don't even know how to explain placebo. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bow out on that one. That's a hard one to explain. Uh, let's see here. Lolly says, I am a mind reader, switch, uh, so I can know your hidden secrets. Be careful. I'm shaking in my boots, Lolly. If, if you told my secrets to the world, I might have to stop teaching, so please don't. Please don't do it. Uh, Judah says, some medication can cause severe hallucination. That's probably true, right? Marjorie, a year ago I saw on the TV, it was a documentary that said, it said, Africa used to do witchcraft to revive, bring them back to life, their old leaders, and ask them what to do. It was so spooky. I just changed the channel. Okay, there you go. Uh, Gertrude says, when I was young, my family visited very often, uh, one Haitian family, until my father noticed they had, they had, they had experienced a lot of voodoo and that was the, f the end of our relationship. Okay, so there we go. So a hex, maybe there was a, he there was a curse on those people or something like that. You have the same pen, amazing. This is, this is such good luck, buddy. This is like the best pencil. It's a Bic. It'll bring you good fortune in your English. See, I can't even get it there, but it's there. Well done. Placebo, not real medication. Thank you. That was good. Not a true, not a true, not real. Yeah, not real. Oh, how to explain it? Anyways, you'll have to Google that one. UFOs, initials of unidentified flying object. 
see both used for new, yes, and used for testing new medication. Yep, definitely. All right. And I think we got the last one. I'll let Julian take us home. Mo Sargi played Ouija boards in haunted houses and always loses blood from his nose or something, something cut his neck. It's an entity. Interesting. Uh, Marco says he can read my hands and predict like what your future is going to be. I don't know if you guys have seen The Simpsons where you're like, you know, you're like reading the hand. And you're kind of like, oh, well, I can see everything. I can see you. this is your big house. Oh, you're going to have, uh, you know, three, four cars. Oh, and here's the swimming pool. And then you spit on the hand. Classic Simpsons. And with that, we're going to end it there. Let's go back to the cafe. Say goodbye to everybody. Bye, crew. Have a great day. High five. And I think that's it for me, guys. Um, nice topic. Hope you guys enjoyed that, give you a little bit of new vocabulary that you can use to talk about this, this topic, maybe over a few beers. That sounds like a bad idea. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that. We'll see you next week. Have yourselves an amazing weekend. Big kiss around the world. Go to bed, wake up, go out. It's Thursday night, go out in Brazil because apparently Thursday night's a good night for going out. And we'll see you guys on Monday. Take care, see you next time.